I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey, James Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got another video with the Druid again on Shatter and I. Like I said, this has really been fun uh, playing with the Druid. Different uh, play style, different technique, strategy. And I've always said maybe it not ne is not necessarily about the ship, but it's about the strategy and the players and the teamwork. So let's get right to it. Before we begin, like, subscribe, button below. If you see value in the channel, and uh, we're going to start doing more of these tactics corners. And uh, I see World of Warships channel is actually starting to do it themselves, and uh, maybe we're adding value to it by maybe causing them to want to do these kind of tactics and straddles. If you look, check out the World of Warships channel. They're actually starting to do things like this as well, and it's pretty awesome. But for, as always, thanks uh, for all the support and the community. I appreciate uh, doing this the best I can in the time that I have because uh, I'm currently still flying combat operations, and, and this is the kind of a hobby of mine. But it's really great to you know connect with the community as well as uh, you know mingle with those, especially those that have served in the military. You know, I can't thank you enough for your service as always and appreciate your support. And so let's get right to it. The map Shatter, this time from the south. And I always like to take point, different points of view, uh, starting at different positions on the map and seeing how they actually unfold. And a uh, caveat note, um, again, uh, my clan obviously is not in, um, you know, these higher leagues like Typhoon or Hurricane, which I've seen only a few clans and played a few of those guys pretty well. I've been working a lot lately, getting different perspectives and viewpoints. Uh, the current battle that you're seeing right now unfold is is uh, against VF-119, and I'm working for DBD. Uh, shout out to the, both of them. Uh, they are in more of the Storm League. So again, this is a little caveat. It's not necessarily in the lower league, not necessarily in the higher, but in the middle, kind of Storm League, kind of higher up in the, the league's top 100 teams in North America. So pretty, pretty fun and different perspective. So uh, I would say that this, uh, you know, like people are saying, oh, you haven't played in higher leagues. So no, no, I'm actually trying. Um, I'm actually working around and playing with different teams and seeing how uh, they play and their different tactics. And quite honestly, there it is a drastic change. And uh, we'll take a look at it, some of these. Okay, so right now, let's start off the back. We're in the south here. Normally, what does the red team do uh, on the north side? What I've seen most of the time, most north teams actually try to contest alpha while having a contingency group at Bravo, trying to just to hold a simple... Uh, kind of flank just to make sure that nobody kind of outdoes them and kind of does a little hold. So what I've seen right here, and I think what the video will show is the northern team will kind of just put a cruiser at Bravo and a cruiser supporting the destroyer out in the flank, while the normal thing to do at Alpha is have a destroyer run to the, the cap and hide behind an island, while a couple of cruisers and maybe a battleship will go in tow to support both sides at Alpha Bravo. Now, what this plan with this particular team that I was doing uh, with was... Um, Everybody's doing a massive push to Charlie while the destroyer runs in and caps Alpha to throw the enemy team off, thinking there's a larger force at Alpha. And I like that. A little bit of deception there actually encourages uh, different kind of reactions from the enemy team, allows you to make these kind of good pushes to throw the enemy team off. And it's all about flanking. It's all about a superior number and firepower. And I think that's really what we actually ended up doing. It's pretty awesome to see actually work out. But let's see actually um, in this particular case what actually happened. So me and the Druid. Now, the, the Druid is, well, just, once you watch the video, what it is is just pure gunboat action, and it's really devastating and very, very annoying, as you're going to see the video play out. And so what we did in this particular strategy is have the battleship push up to the north. Cruisers also support and use the center channel uh, to push up in the middle as well. And then you're going to have the cruiser support the destroyer as well as going out to the flank. And you're going to see how this kind of look. I mean, looking at this right here, if I was the enemy team, I'm in a world of hurt because now I have a problem here. I have to deal with one, two, three, maybe four potential flanks here. One through the center, one through the middle, one around this corner right here using cover, and then another one coming around the flank right here. So you have four potential avenues to defend with only three ships. And that's pretty de devastating and pretty darn scary. And as the video plays out, you're going to see that uh, we're going to have this nice little advance push to the center with the DD cap and Bravo cruisers and support uh, right there. And then we have the ability to actually flank from the north into Alpha. And then we have a potential to flank in from the middle at Alpha in the center. And of course, you also have to make sure the back door is closed with the, the Summers coming in the back to guard Charlie to spot and make sure that we can react in time. And that's kind of the simple maneuver uh, of this particular side from the south. I've seen a lot of people like to do this 
push around. It does take a lot of time, and normally people need to have some kind of a fast destroyer normally. I wouldn't say always, but a fast destroyer to get around these flanks, it really helps out a lot. And of course, a simple DD destroyer uh, that torpedoes a lot in Alpha, just kind of to shoot torps into Alpha to keep the enemy off balance and to keep them distracted. So let's take a look at the video and see how this actually turns out, if this actually works, and if it's a viable strategy, let me know. And uh, we'll take a look at the end. As always, the build will be at the end of the video for the Druid. Uh, let's see how it goes. All right, team, we're on the map Shatter with the Druid, and uh, we're going to go ahead and speed up the video. And you can see kind of how the uh, battlefield develops. Um, starting in the south, uh, I, I don't know. I like starting in the south a little bit more. Uh, it just seems, it seems to feel a little bit more comfortable uh, going to Charlie, capping it uh, pretty quickly, and then you're having the rest of the force supporting us in flank as a, DD, as a shorter player. I like the fact that I can actually uh, maneuver a little bit better. I think the island uh, on the south side is a little bit better. You can see the one to my right there, the island. That is a little bit better cover, it seems like, while the other one is too high to shoot over. So at least my friendlies have an option to shoot over this little small island to my right there. And there we go. We got the Alvaro de Bazan. We're, that's our that's our job as a destroyer player. Getting Being a very good destroyer player means we're hunting other destroyers. And that's my role. Now, he obviously shoots first and reveals himself, and here's the power of the Druid. The Druid loves shooting other cruisers as well. Unfortunately, uh, I can, this is a full DD gunboat bill where I got to reach out to 14.5, and um, I'm kind of trying to see uh, how can I get this Annapolis. Now, he's angled, but angles don't matter with the Druid because the APs are awesome, and they plunge into the superstructure, and you're getting hits like that, 726 every second. Uh, he's doing a really good job at you know um, angling, but unfortunately, I'm getting shot by the Alvar Bazan, so I have to make a decision: do I keep shooting Annapolis, who's low health, or do I shoot the Alvar Bazan? He has this uh, little uh, quick exhaust smoke generator, so he's probably going to go undetected, probably right here. I'm gonna, not after I take a couple HP off of him right now, and he's probably going to pop the smoke. Yep, there it goes. Any kind of HP we take off will pay off in dividends because he doesn't have any heals, so that means anything I take off now will hopefully be devastating to him in, in the future. Now that we're in the smoke, they are not in worry of any kind of radar. We're outside of 10 kilometer radar of anybody of the Annapolis and no Soviet 12 kilometer radar in the area. So we're going to go ahead and push. Notice that my Conde is pushing up real quick. Having a Conde these days is pretty awesome. Very quick speed, very good rush. And he is now, I believe, hydroing. Yep, he's got in hydro range and revealing the Alvaro Bazan. Very bad technique there sitting in smoke. It is not a good idea to do that. Always stay on the move. Um, because you never know if you're going to get a torp magnet or you're going to be caught in hydro or radar. So that's why Clan About is so much different with sitting in smoke. It just doesn't work. More advanced skilled players know that. Alvaro Brazon goes down to the Conde right there, and that was a great flanking maneuver right there. Conde helps us out with the, uh, the hydro, and now we're going to start shooting Annapolis. He also goes down because, look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six ships at Bravo Cap surrounding the area, and it's very, very difficult to angle against that many ships, especially if they're being focused fired. Right now, the Summers at Alpha did a very good job at contesting, and that that cap point is has not been taken over by anybody, so that's a good thing. And now we're taking over uh, Bravo Cap, which gives us a two-cap lead. Unfortunately, St. Vincent goes down from a broadside Montana shooting, and that is very uh, devastating for us right there. Now we are down a battleship while they still have theirs, and we're going to have to go be very, very aggressive right here. We're going to go ahead and shoot all guns on the Gudenlaub, and you notice our team is calling for that right then. We're going to go ahead and focus fire on the Guten Lao because the airstrikes are pretty devastating to our team. And we're going to go use our gunboat ability right here, just nosing in while pressing in, taking as much chip damage as we can. Again, realize any kind of damage you can put in the long run will definitely pay off for your team because, again, it's very difficult to heal back, especially AP damage when fire damage, yeah, it's a little bit better, but man, when you start getting this little AP chip damage over and over and over again, it's gonna pay off in dividends, like I've always said. You know, any kind of compound interest of damage works well uh, for your team. Notice that the Gunla has now nosed in, but we don't care about nosing in because we're gonna have these shells plunging fire right into the superstructure. Meanwhile, our Stalingrad is gonna help us support. Notice he has switched fire to us. Look at that, isn't that crazy that as a DD player, you wanna distract as much fire. We are causing more of a distraction than a Stalingrad nose into him. Is, and that tells you that we're more powerful than a Stalingrad, so very, very deadly right there for the Guten Lao. Now he switches targets. Now that you realize, okay, Stalingrad probably is a more, much more bigger threat, but you know what? We are bigger threats. This uh, destroyer druid on this thing, it's annoying because we're re reload rate is 1.3 seconds, and it's just causing too much headache and heartache 
And, um, yep, that's why I was said. You got to be a bigger, bigger distraction to the enemy team. And he goes down right there. He didn't mu not. He didn't do much to the Stalingrad, and we are still full. Uh, not kind of full health. We're about twenty thousand health. That's pretty good. And we've got two hills left. We've got Charlie Bravo Cat Summers at the south there. He is going to guard the back door to Charlie and making sure that we are um, preventing the, the other destroyer from capping it so that we can also push up and then react to that. Montana and Des Moines are behind this island. We pop radar to make sure they are still in that same position. Now, again, this game can still be lost if uh, you know these two guys right here take out our cruisers because we lost our battleship. So we're going to hold right here, and I'm waiting for the Des Moines to push up. Now, he knows what a Druid player is. I mean, this team... Uh, is in the top 100. They know what a druid can do, and they're probably, you know, I don't know if they've ever watched my videos, but they know what the possibilities are if you rush a druid um, that it has support behind it. Now, you can rush a druid by yourself, that's fine, but when you have support, it is kind of scary. And notice he's firing, and he's we're trying to <laughs> use the islands and using tree lines and ridges here to mitigate and mask our, our, our ship and mitigate damage. I'm trying to see if I can shoot the guns a little higher here, and if I can get right over and hit a superstructure, yes, we can. And look at that. We're taking about 200 to 700 damage just by shooting through the trees. And this is just using pure tactics right here and using the game mechanics to see if we can just cheat our way through this. Notice we're not spotted right now, and we're getting shots through the tree line. And I'm telling you, if you can find simple little ways and tactics to get through it and getting any kind of damage for your team really, really <laughs> pays off in the long run. Now, we got to make sure our hydro is up to on somebody. Yep, and we spotted the torpedo. Somebody called out torpedo to the left. That's great communication right there. Call out torpedoes anytime you can. Makes you guys a good team and a good uh, destroyer player as well, calling out uh, torpedoes for your cruisers and battleships. Notice that a lot of us mitigated the damage from the, the, the uh, torpedo run right there that could have been very, very deadly to us. Uh, our Stalin God unfortunately takes one hit. Ooh, and he gets hit right there. So we are down a cruiser. Now we're going to go ahead and do a push right here. Notice that we are working in tandem and making sure that we can get as much damage on the Des Moines. He goes down. Unfortunately, we lose our Conde as well. And that's two cruisers down, and we have to take a almost half full HP uh, Montana, and I'm debating, do we rush this guy? And notice, the biggest thing I'm going to do is shoot the nose right here. So take a look at where his health is at, and we're taking about 700, 1,000 every second here, so let's take a look, uh, if I can zoom out a little bit. We take out the Shimakaze, great job, Summer's there, and now we're just going to take out the Montana, he's the last guy. Look at that, Druid versus Montana, he takes a full shot, and again, slim profile, mitigates that damage the best you can, and we are shooting it. Look at all that damage taken off. I'm going to see if I can zoom out so you guys see the... Yep, look at his health right there. Just melting away. The elevator down next stop to the bottom of the sea. Trying to send this guy back to port. And look at that. Nice. Look at the reload rate. I mean, it's just constant pure damage. It's so fun right here. And he is debating, who do I shoot? Who do I shoot? Druid or the other cruiser? And just look at the damage we're getting right there. Dru I mean, Druid's nothing to gawk at, guys. I mean, we are literally melting away his HP. Unfortunately, our team, Puerto Rico, gets in the way. And, oh, man, I'm taking friendly fire shots here. And do we get this kill? Right in the superstructure. Gets the kill. Last kill. Up, wow, about 99,000 damage at the very last right there. I'm not sure how much HP we took off the Montana, but it was pretty awesome. Great I'm trying to help melt him down. And that was just us putting a stand with the Druid on the map Shatter. Hope you guys enjoyed. 99,000 damage total. And uh, as always, hope you guys like the video. Support the channel. Like, subscribe, bubble below. Bill will be at the end of the screen. So that actual push actually seemed to work right there. But let me know your thoughts. What can we get, do to get better? And just murking around, seeing different types of strategies, different types of gameplay styles, and different reaction videos. So as always, if you guys see me out there, say hi, stay safe. And as always, I'll see you guys on the high seas. Cheers.